So ultimately, that's a competitive advantage that we have over other agencies. Then our client retention is going to like basically be zero after that. Honestly, I don't know anyone else that's doing this type of model. And so that's why I think it's, it's a better model because no one else is doing it. So those things will typically get a reply, but you won't go very far because... Welcome in, everyone. Welcome, Thomas. Thanks, bro. Thanks. We're happy to be here. How many people are in Argens? Um, off the top of my head, maybe 150. How many people are in what? Argens. SMMA Argens. Argens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn, bro. You're making money. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the real money is. It's not in SMMA, guys. Right? It really is. 100%. All right. So, um, Arturo, what do you want me to talk about? Cool. So, uh, we did a lot of appointment setting, so I'm not sure if we should cover something around, uh, closing and sales or service delivery, I think are the most requested ones. I think maybe we do a vote. Yeah, sure. Bro, uh, offer and sales would be fire. Offer and sales? Yeah. Two, four. All right. Everyone vote in chat. One for sales and closing, two for service delivery. Are you guys ever going to open up 300 agencies again? And like kick out the members who are slacking? Um, no, no, dang, it's unfortunate. Yeah, maybe one day we'll do something. Um, but no, gotcha. We're, we're definitely not gonna add more people. It's gonna stay three hundred agencies forever. Okay, maybe six hundred agencies. <laughs> Let's do something around how to guarantee results. Because I know a lot of people, you know, you can build a good offer, but when it comes to actually delivering the results, I know a lot of people get kind of scared to, you know, how can I guarantee results to a client with no past experience? Yeah. Well, you can't, the thing is you can't really guarantee results uh, unless you have experience. Like that's the thing with me. Um, how I got started is that first I worked for a permanent makeup studio for free so literally how i went about my outreach is that i just started cold calling permanent makeup studios just because i thought i knew a little bit about how to run ads for them just off of watching a few videos and uh that's how i got my first quote-unquote client because it was not really a client really i just worked for her for free um but that was like the biggest catalyst in me knowing that hey i could actually like now i have the skills to like run ads for one type of business which is permanent makeup artists and i'm already like like 50% of the way there of making an offer because I'm getting them leads. But what I didn't realize was that leads isn't enough, right? You could get a business leads and they're like, especially for local businesses, they're going to be like, okay, what do I do with this? Like, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to be like all around my phone all day, so I can't call these people. So the next step for me was to figure out how to go about appointment setting. And that's when I realized there were other agencies doing appointment setting. And I was kind of like desperately trying to figure out how they were doing it because it seemed like such a crazy operation, which it is like, it's not easy. You have to know how to set up the systems so that, you know, you hire an appointment setter and you hire them correctly. And then that appointment setter gets notified, um, you know, in a timely manner. And then as soon as they get notified, they call, like everything is, is up to like how you want things to be up to your standards. So it's definitely difficult. How, like, can you guys type in the chat, what niche you're in just to get a feel of like, all right, so car detailing a lot of car detailing yeah wonder why um so it really it's it's a it's a it's an individual thing to learn about service delivery that's why you, you'll see all these gurus like not really talk about it because really they just know how to do service delivery for their agency so um i can share my screen and show you kind of the process for how we do it what would you say is like the initial route people should take when they're trying to find out what's the best route to go about service delivery for their niche since it's obviously not really shared around you should like be willing to work for free um or be willing to work for like way less than you would think you're worth and i encourage this because like a lot of people go in the space and they're like yo let me charge a thousand two thousand dollars a month and even if they think they can do it they'll try it they'll hire someone on like upwork whatever an appointment setter they'll run the ads just from a video they watched and they just like basically shoot themselves in the foot because it's they realize it's really really difficult and like they didn't build that muscle memory of managing someone so managing someone and then communicating with the client and then the, i guess this kind of goes into managing 
managing your appointment setter, but like making sure they memorize their scripts, making sure they call people at the right times. And then, you know, there's also the technical aspects of like, they need to get notified through whatever, like Slack, through their channel. And then you have to learn how to set that up through Zapier, through high level, like all these different automations, stuff like that. So it's very individual. Um, it's something you can't really find online. So my something best... that you gain off experience. Yeah. And like, that's the reward. Like once you get your first clients and you like just try your best and you're really like resilient, the reward is you learning how to make the business owner more money. And once you figure that out, then you just you have the leverage to make a good offer and say, I can guarantee you a certain number of appointments every month or your money back. And you can go with these crazy offers. And that's where you have the leverage. But before you have that, you have to be willing to, like I said, work for free and put yourself out there just for the sake of learning, not earning. But basically for me, how many of you guys have watched my videos? Probably everyone. So it might be a little bit dumb for me to just like walk you through. But basically we run ads for permanent, I mean, now we don't do permanent makeup artists anymore, but body sculptors. And so here's your ad. We run ads called lead form ads. And so this is for an offer that the business would have. So if you're working for, uh, you know, with a dentist, for them, it's going to be probably like a free teeth whitening. Or uh, if you're working with car detailers, it's like, you know, 30% off or whatever. Sometimes it doesn't have to be like a discount or something for free. It could just be like you made a special because it's like a holiday or something. So really your ad doesn't have to be a discount. You just have to like be creative on figuring out like an offer for them. And so with this offer, you run the ad and that generates a lot of leads, uh, which are going to go inside your CRM. How many of you guys use high level? Literally everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in high level, the next step once you figure out the ad, that's the first piece of the puzzle, the ad. And you'll realize like the ad is actually pretty easy. Once you have a winning ad, you basically have an ad that you can run for all of your clients, right? So there's no like media buying, testing different, you know, ad copies and stuff like that. Not that testing is not important, but it doesn't matter as much in, you know, for local businesses. Then the next piece of the puzzle is figuring out the automations. So what first text message are you going to send? How are you going to follow up with those leads in the most effective way uh, and in a way that turns those leads into an appointment or into a sale for the business owner or into a consultation for the business owner. So this is the piece of the puzzle that's the hardest uh, to solve because you're doing the business owner's job, which is to almost like, that, right? but that's where you're solving a big problem. And so automatically, if you solve a big problem, then you're, you're going to make more money. The biggest, right? The biggest, uh, the more problems you solve, the more money you make essentially. Um, so you want to, you want to test different automations. So you want to try, for example, sending a message where you just say, Hey, is this, you know, the name of the lead? So you put contact first name. You can try, I mean, usually this gets, you know, a good amount of replies. You can try uh, sending a picture. So for example, if you guys are working with a lot of car detailers, you can send a picture of different cars that the, uh, the car detailer has detailed or painted. I don't know. So you can test with that. Then you can also uh, send that with a voicemail, right? So you can um, have the business owner record a voicemail and um, one time, and then you could just send that automatically to everyone. So those things will typically, typically get a reply, but you won't go very far because ultimately they're going to need they're going to want to talk to an actual human or have a back and forth conversation. And the only way to do that is to have an appointment setter uh, or just basically someone that takes that conversation for the business owner and turns that lead into an appointment. And so that's where you come in and you kind of have to create an SOP and really train your appointment setter. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I made. I didn't train my appointment setter enough. Um, and I didn't realize like you had to actually like almost every day do some role play with them and like, you know, have them like really memorize the script and get on a Zoom call with them and tell them, okay, like, you know, act as if I was a lead and you're calling me right now. And you're like, all right, this is, uh, you know, this is the lead. They're like, hi, Thomas. I'm calling from the car detail or business, whatever. And you have to role play with them because if you don't, they'll, they'll never basically get any feedback on what they're doing wrong. You can like have the calls recorded on high level and then play them back. But the thing is, if you do that, they'll 
rapidly get discouraged if they do a shit job and you don't want that you want to have like a really really um tight connection with your appointment setter so that's the mistake i think i made that you guys you guys should teach from or learn from would, would you recommend doing like daily five to ten minute huddles with them where they just meet with them and talk about things yeah. kpis what to improve on yeah definitely definitely like <laughs> The most important thing is that you 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 have like very very good communication with them, and once you have that, I mean you can't lose. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. The appointment setter does the appointment setting, and um, what else do you guys want to know? Because I know this was like pretty general. Maybe you guys already knew what you know what I'm talking about. From Thomas, this. what would you say for people for them to build out something that's more unique? It can be the offer, it can be the service delivery, because you know you obviously build 300 agencies, and now you're doing SaaS, which is not something typical that you see in SMMA. So what would you suggest for people to be able to change their kind of mindset and their view to be more unique? Because obviously being the, the more unique you are, the more unique your problem solving is, the, the more success you'll have. What do you mean? So talking about your experience, right? You built 300 agencies and now you're doing SaaS, which is not something that's very common, right? Yeah. And, you know, not having something common that's different is making you successful. So what would you suggest for agency owners to kind of implement into their agency in terms of, you know, maybe a different structured offer or a different way of doing service mm. delivery, something that's a bit more unique. Yeah. So right now with our agency, we um, we basically don't run the ads. So we have templates already uploaded on high level that they could just uh, run themselves, right? So they click on a template that they want for their service in question and they run the ad and then we consult them on how to look at how their ad is performing, right? Look at the cost per lead. If it's below $5 per lead, then the ad is great. If it's above that, turn it off and try running a different ad. So the ad is taken care of. Right now, we're just doing the appointment setting. And so as a result of that, that is a more efficient business model. And so it's cheaper for them. And so ultimately, that's a competitive advantage that we have over other agencies. But obviously, this model is fine, right? Um, you couldn't do what I'm doing if you don't know how to actually run ads for your niche in question. So you couldn't create the templates for them. But yeah, like Arturo said, you know, you want to be different in, um, you know, not necessarily your niche, right? It's fine to go for the same niche, but how you serve your clients. So another thing we're doing is building a Facebook community. So we have like an affiliate program where people can be affiliates of of our agency and because they're affiliates they'll be in this community on facebook and they can recruit affiliates and bring on more people in this community and because they'll be rewarded essentially for their referrals uh, and their commissions then they're gonna they can do for example like weekly calls weekly group calls with these people and that's gonna help the clients get better results with their ads with how they use high level and also with how they for example do like in-person consultations or like how they manage their med spa right so those are like two ways you can innovate you can build a community for your clients you can do like a facebook group or like real estate agents for car detailers and you can also consult them but you can't get to that stage unless you've done the hard part which is like doing stuff for them so, yeah. how do you keep how do you keep those people who are affiliating for you obviously they're working for commission right yeah how do you keep them motivated for that uh because they're earning commissions so for us we're basically selling the software we're reselling high level at 497 dollars a month plus uh the appointment setter okay <laughs> Plus the appointment setter, uh, and that's 150. We're selling that at 150 a week. So they get the software, and then they get a unique appointment setter themselves. Yeah. Why and do so you they would, that weekly? They would manage their appointment setter. We wouldn't even be in communication. I mean, we would in the beginning uh, to train them, right? To train the appointment setter. But then the appointment setter is up to them to manage, and they know how to use the software because we have videos. We have very good, solid onboarding procedure guiding them through like each step of the way how to launch your ads how to we don't teach them how to set up automations the automations are already there but basically how to set everything up and we make it very easy for them and in terms of like the affiliate program the client can earn 200 dollars a month recurring for every client uh they bring on for us that stays that keeps using it right so it's like basically the same uh affiliate structure as go high level, but for my own clients. And so the reason we're doing this is that we're also trying to build a community where the initial clients or the most successful clients, the most successful med spa owners that use our software and that run their ads and that, you know, have the, uh, the appointment setter, they can do, they can become affiliates. They can recruit more affiliates and they can also do the teaching and the consulting side of things. So we wouldn't even have to teach them like 
a lot because there's going to be those people that can do, for example, weekly group calls on the Facebook group. And so that would make our product over time be better, right? It's going to be like a flywheel effect where the more affiliates we have and the more money they make, that's really what's going to motivate them intrinsically to keep going and to keep like recruiting more affiliates and teaching them on how to be successful with the software, how to run their ads right? How to run a successful med spa, then our client retention is going to like basically be zero after that. And so, yeah, that's the goal for us. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So the only kind of work that you have to do for that is pretty much get hired the appointment setter. Yeah, basically. And, you, and don't, you, you know, don't think this is like easy money, it's like yeah. hire the appointment setter, plug them in for the business owner, like untrained, like now that we need to have like very, very solid systems for the appointment center to be trained. Uh, we need to recruit a lot of them. We need to have like build out an entire recruiting system, probably an entire training system where it's not us that trains the appointment center, but it's someone else like, you know, who we would have to manage. So it's a lot of different systems that we have to think about. But at the same time, honestly, I don't know anyone else that's doing this type of model. And so that's why I think it's, it's a better model because no one else is doing it, right? It's a big thing. Are you using OPEX? Yeah. And then you create the ad templates or you just use theirs? Yeah, we create ad templates. They can also upload their own ad images if they want to. But we recommend they use their own uh, um, or not like our images because they're like proven to work. And in terms of like uh, the monthly payments for clients, because obviously, you know, an agency can make, say, 1500 uh, from their retainer monthly. What makes SaaS better uh, since it's a little bit lower ticket? Like what makes it better in terms of the retention of the client? It's because it's more affordable because no agency is going to keep paying like $2,000 a month recurring forever. I mean, no business. Did I say agency, bro? I'm tired. <laughs> um, so that's why like going the software route, it's cheaper. And also if you can split your pricing structure where you have on one side, the software, and then you can add on different services where you have the appointment setter that's charged separately, then if they don't want the appointment setter, for example, and they want the receptionist to do the lead follow-up, then they could just say, oh, I don't want this. And they only pay this. And also with software, the big thing is like it's software. So if they use, if we white label go high level and we give them like website templates for a new booking page and they use that, they implement that then, you know, they like, we've basically made ourselves irreplaceable and they can't really, you know, get rid of you. Yeah. Because then they need you for the website. Yeah. So it could be for the website. It could be for like review management. The more services, or I guess the more um, software features you stack for the business owner that they can use, the more irreplaceable you make yourself. So it goes back to like figuring out really what they need in terms of like their specific problems. So for them, I mean, like for us, it might not be a, a website that they need, but maybe they need like better review management, right? They want to get more five-star reviews. So that's something that the software can do automatically send them uh, or send the leads um, after they book in an appointment, an automatic Google review invitation to their email and their SMS. And they get a, uh, the business owner gets more reviews. That's awesome. So you suggest people to really master the initial kind of like base model of agency yeah. business model. And then from there shift to a SaaS. Yeah. So in the beginning, you have to like, like I said, be willing to learn and really humble yourself. Cause like, realistically, you don't know shit, you know, you're probably like not confident on sales calls and on cold calls. And like, there's a reason for that. It's cause like you yourself don't know for sure that you can actually get your clients results so be willing to work for free and the money is made once you figure out how to make someone else more money like you can't really fake it you know you can't really like skip the process but the beauty like the beauty is that once you once you figure out how to actually make a business owner more money then you have like other avenues such as SaaS, and you can kind of shift your business model to however you know you want and you can do some, you know, like more consulting, you can sell courses, you can do like a done with you program, which is kind of what we're doing, a do it yourself program. Like there's so many avenues you can take it once you become valuable from actually um, solving a problem for a business. Yeah, I think that a lot of people focus too much on, you know, how much money can I make from a client? How much can this client pay me monthly rather than how much can I make this client, you know? 
I think that a lot of people should focus on making their client as much money as possible. And then from there, you can kind of calculate, okay, this is how much I can get paid out of making my client X amount per month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, should we go over questions now? Yeah, I was just about to say that. All right. Let's do some Q&A. All right, let's do like hands up. Everybody turn on the camera. All right, and then I'm just gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Arya? Yo, yo, my bad. I'm at work, so I can't um, turn on my cam, but pretty much I had a question about offers, right? So right now I'm on a pay, pay per results basis, but because I'm running ads for my client, I need them to pay for ad spend. And so like, I'm wondering how can I create an offer that's just as good as a completely pay on the results basis, but um, in a way where they pay or, or that I can cover my upfront costs, if that makes uh -huh. sense. To yeah, again. yeah. So you can charge them upfront. If it's your first client, you know, like my biggest advice would be like, just be okay losing money because regardless, you're going to lose money on like software costs. I wouldn't recommend, for example, you go for the $497 a month plan of high level. Uh, you could just go for the 97 one. That's all you need for one to two clients. Um, and then ad spend, the client pays that. And yeah, but I was so, tell them, You sorry. can tell them, for example, for whatever appointments I get you, I can get like a percentage, something like that, right? You could do like a commission deal um, and that can kind of cover almost all of your costs. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm at right now. But like what I'm saying is, let's say, um, how do I find a way to mitigate their risk when paying the upfront cost for ad spend? You have to like run an ad that works for them and show them the results. I guess you have to make them money. Like, I don't know what, what niche are you in? Um, so basically I, I help truckers with recruitment. So I hope that like, like, that's what I mean. So I'm not on like, I don't make them money, but I help them like fill their trucking positions. Let's say like that as an example. And now I'm at a point where let's say just as an example, let's say I have a package. Okay with $2,000 um, altogether, $1,000 for ad spend, and then $1,000 for my service fee. If I, right now my offer is, okay, you just cover the ad spend and you only pay me the service fee once, you're, once you get your hire, okay? So then they only pay me the remaining $1,000, just as an example, once they hire someone. So that's like the lowest that like, how do I mitigate their risk when it comes to paying the $1,000 upfront for ad spend? How do I convince them? Was like a better offer that I can do how do I improve my offer? Uh, well, you don't have to charge them upfront for ad spend. They can, you can basically have them create their own ad account or if they, yeah, if they don't already have one and then they link their card on that ad account and you just run the ad for them. You can do it that way. So each day they, uh, they get charged on a daily basis and they don't have to pay like anything upfront. Yeah. Um, so, so you don't think there's a way where I can like create a better offer to like so let's say to close the client this is mainly not i'm not worried about fulfilling the service i'm just worried about like how do i increase my closing rate by and, and like having a better offer pretty much by improving my offer because like obviously i've kind of hit a plateau where if i need them to pay for ad spend like they still have a risk you know what i mean i, I want to mitigate the risk completely and i was just wondering if you know if there's a way where i can do that by offering a guarantee yeah, and I've I've already I already have a guarantee and things like that. Do you think my like is there a way where I can you know? So so, so are you saying if I don't get them the high I refund the ad spend? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean if you want to make it like even more of a no brainer, you can just be bolder with your guarantee. That's how you make a better offer. Um, but you could if you want to get a better closing rate, like you could also get like more testimonials. That's like another thing you could look at, right? So it's not always about yeah. making a better offer. It's also about like I did this for this client and I got them these results and they'll trust you more. So, okay. So do you think, so do you think com comparatively, let's just say either I stick with the same offer where it's they pay for ad spend and then um, they pay the service fee once I deliver the service compared to, um, compared to if let's say they connect the, the, the um, account to like, they connect the card to the account and then pay for ad spend ongoing. Or do you think I should just um, basically just increase the testimonials and stuff? Yeah. I mean, it depends on, how confident you are on delivering the results. If you're very confident, obviously go for the option where they pay later. But like as a general rule, I wouldn't spend my own money on their ads. Oh yeah, sweet bro, sounds good. All yeah. right, thanks, thanks bro. Yeah. Kenny. Right. Um, just real quick, um, in terms of setting up the SaaS and stuff like that, um, I've heard that like it takes a, t a while for it to get like automated. Um, in regards to like letting them use the platform and teaching them how to use it. Um, any tips on like what would be the main like fundamentals or pillars uh, for setting up a SaaS? Like what do you have to have down on Pat um, when you like release uh, that as a service? So first thing is 
knowing how to run their ads. Uh, once you have like different ad images with the ad copies and the targeting, once you have that down, you can go ahead and create templates on up hex and then add that as an extension on a high level. And then you just, it's just a question of recording a video saying like, you know, if uh, here's how you run your ad, you just go through the steps. You can also upload your own image and then here's how you look at the reporting. Um, so there's, there would be a reporting tab on high level um, and you can like kind of tweak high level using different tools. There's one tool called the marketer's toolkit. And you can, for example, like remove different tabs from the menu and you can remove, like you can just add things and remove things. So it's pretty cool uh, to make high level your own. And then the next step is like knowing how to do the appointment setting, like really in and out, like you've done the volume, you've done the reps to train them, train your appointment setters, um, and then like have the business owner hire that appointment setter and communicate with them and set is expectations. That like an extra, is that like an extra feature that you have? And like with the um, recordings, is that like kind of like a funnel that you put them through or are they just like prompts that come up and say like, oh, this is how you set up, like add the template for yourself and whatnot? Yeah. Um, so you can use something called user flow. I'm going to type it in the chat. It's like an expensive software. Um, it's like $200 a month, but once they log in, you can have like a little guide at the bottom, uh, where they click it, it opens like a checklist. They click on step one. It walks them through, like, here's what you click on to set up your, um, ad, or here's what you click on to, you know, set up your calendar. Here's how you link your Google account. Here's how you link your Facebook account. And then like, as they click on the different things, it walks them through the steps, like click by click so that's a very very good tool because people don't want to watch like hours of content as well thanks so appreciate that yeah marketers the marketers toolkit is basically um you can I, i'm gonna pull up the website it's a website that basically you connect your high level and you can edit high level and like remove different things different features for example like if they don't need to connect their their tiktok account like you could just remove that in the integrations tab so that it only shows connect your google connect your facebook and doesn't show like connect your tiktok or whatever the fuck you know because there's like connect your quickbooks account you just remove those things so it makes high level like your own software. yeah exactly and you can also like customize the sidebar and different things like that yo great hey, right. <clears throat> hey what's good um so I switched my offer like two weeks ago. And so I actually, I don't know if you're gonna be able to answer my question directly, but like we're scaling too quickly. So I onboarded like five clients last weekend. So I have like a strategy that works and I can get basically as many clients as I want. But the problem is actually service delivery. And I know I can fulfill the service for like a couple of clients, but scaling it seems to be my issue. So I'm using um, AI to do the outreach for my clients at the moment. But the problem is our systems keep breaking down like yeah. every day. And I'm having trouble because these clients are, like pressuring me um, and I'm not able to like fix problems fast enough. And so I'm like struggling to automate the process and to hire the right talent who can help me. But I also don't have the cash flow because it's pay on results. So I only have like a couple K to work with. Um, well, that's a good problem to have. I'd say like you're in a good position, like you've put yourself <laughs> in a good position, even though it might feel like it's a lot of pressure, but mm -hmm. it's good. Um, yeah. The next step is like to learn what turns those leads into appointments. So mm -hmm. if your systems are breaking down, um, I would like, I would challenge you to hire an appointment setter. Do you have an appointment setter? Um, no, but I have people I can source. I have people I've worked with in the past. Um, I wanted my whole like twist for my agency is basically that like we use AI but the problem is whenever, like, I keep getting banned by Facebook, um, whatever I set up the bots. So I can't use it for, like, more than one or two clients before the system just gets shut down again. Okay. Use AI how? Yeah. So I have basically, like, I have um, a couple softwares that I run it through. And then essentially the bot just takes over and it just sends the DMs and, like, re responses and stuff. And it seems to be effective, but it's not okay. scalable. Um. Well, that's just about making the AI better, right? I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a hard problem to solve because it's just like, it's, I can't really fix it just alone. So I guess I, my struggle is finding the people who can help me fix it. So I guess my question to you would be, do you know anybody who's like an expert in like software and stuff? No. Great. Great. Shoot me a DM bro on, on okay. Discord. Gotcha. I'll help Sounds you with good. that. Okay, cool. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. That's all. <laughs>
All right, Vincent. Hey, uh, so my marketing agency, where I'm outsourcing the work. So how do I guarantee results? Because like I had previous bad experiences with media buyers. And how do you guarantee results? Yeah, like in this case, I'm outsourcing my work instead of working on my own. Um, we have to. You have to learn like the process. So are you working with a media buyer? You said. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So. Um, ask your media buyer, like, what do you do? And like, learn from them. And then when you have another client, you try and like copy what your media buyer did for your other client. And then now all of a sudden you have the knowledge, you have the skills to create an SOP so that when you want to hire someone, it's easier. And you also know how to do it yourself. So you can like troubleshoot when service delivery is going wrong, when you're not getting your client's results, because you know, like, what went wrong so like you know how to read data on your ads you know like inside high level like are the leads replying like just basic stuff and because you have to know what's going on fundamentally or else you can't just hire immediately right like yeah but the you have problem to have the skills hiring a media buyer it's, he seems to have like a good portfolio but eventually he just like with the communication and everything with the client it was just like horrible yeah the communication with the client what do you mean like he didn't respond he does the, the reporting with the client right yeah he doesn't re respond to the clients and then at the end i ended up giving that like, money to the client because like he, he wouldn't communicate for like three days or so yeah well, i mean that's the problem when you hire too early like um you need to have the right systems in place and you need to know how to do it yourself man or else yeah. you're hiring someone who doesn't know how to how the system works how the business works and you're just kind of hiring someone and not really knowing, you know, the whole process. Exactly. And if you hire someone too quick, um, they're kind of going to be like, who is this guy? Like, this is so random, you know? Yeah. Like, they're not, they're not going to respect you. They're not going to respect your clients. They're not going to have that sense of urgency if they would have, you know, if you, if you compare that to, you know, if they work with like a bigger agency or just a bigger company. They have no reason, like, basically to work for you. I see. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Gazi. Yes. So uh, I saw one of your videos and you, like, you were talking about data reactivation. And it's, like, I'm basically, I'm just looking to offer that as, like, one of my main services. And I know you mentioned that, you know, an agency that, like, they kind of base their agency around data reactivation. I just want to know what you think about it. Yeah. Um, I tried it for, like, a few clients just to get them more reviews. And at the same time, get them, like get the old clients to come back right but i don't know exactly for what niche it works i think it works for gyms but other than that it's a good offer to do like every four months okay that's it all right yeah so you'd have to do your own research on that yeah all right. thomas how do you find clients outreach to them with SaaS? how do i what how do you find clients slash outreach to them with SaaS? um so we're gonna run ads so I recorded an ad and I'm partnering up with a appointment setting agency and they have a service where they follow up with your leads 24 seven within like instantly. So as soon as there's a new lead, one of their people is on it and they call them and tell them, Hey, this is uh, you know, this is like Sarah, I'm calling because you just clicked on one of our ads. Do you want to speak with Thomas, the founder of the agency, and he can walk you through some case studies on how he can get you 10 to 15 extra bookings a month. They're like, yeah, of course. So yeah. So we would run lead ads and have that agency do the appointment setting. I could have done the appointment setting myself, but I want to make sure it's done professionally. And I also trust them. And um, yeah, when you have money, you can do a lot of things. So I would recommend if you're a beginner, just go for cold calling, cold calling or walk-ins. A lot of people think ads or like sending emails is like high leverage. Cause it's like, you do a little bit of effort, right? You just write the email or you just record the ad and like thousands of people see it. But when you're a beginner, like you have to realize that you don't have an offer. You don't have, you don't know anything. So even if you get a client through ads as a beginner, you're not going to keep that client. So you don't even know how to sell. So you're like hundred percent guaranteed to lose money. So that's why a lot of people say running, starting an agency and you just immediately run ads is like very, very stupid. Even if you're at like 5k a month, I still wouldn't run ads. Yo, Thomas, you said walk-ins. You want to talk about your experience with your first walk-in in Paris? Yeah. Um, 
I just did one walk-in and it didn't, she basically already had, um, she, she basically already worked with an agency. So I was talking for like 10 minutes only for her to tell me that she was working with someone. So yeah, but I recommend like walk-ins if you're a beginner because it's way it just more personal. Kind of like, yeah, it just kind of builds your confidence and you kind of realize like when you look at a business owner in the eyes and you're offering them a service, you kind of realize like, holy fuck, I'm worth nothing, you know, like <laughs> you kind of like humble yourself and it's a good experience to have because you yeah. realize like you have a lot to learn basically. So, yeah. So walk-ins is like walk-ins when you think of it is, is, um, is a better use of your time than sending emails in my opinion, because if you do walk-ins, if you do like, let's say five walk-ins in the next two weeks, um, and you basically make an offer to work for free, then you're basically guaranteed to close those five clients. And then you learn, and then you can start charging, you know, build a real offer and start charging real money because you're actually going to be worth something. Yeah. And so that's I, super unique. Yeah. It's a better approach than directly sending emails and wasting your time because you just get discouraged. So right. Gustav, you want to unmute? Yeah. So, uh, I have a quick question. I'm about your service delivery. Uh, you said you're doing Facebook ads as the service. And uh, I'm just curious if you have tried any other, like uh, TikTok ads or anything other than Facebook. Yeah, I tried uh, TikTok ads for an e-commerce store like last year, but it didn't go too well. But um, yeah, we, we basically only do Facebook ads. So if, if I'm gonna do like lead generation for let's say house remodeling, for example, yeah. So Facebook is the way to go. Or would you recommend maybe, to try TikTok? Google because for house remodeling, that's something that people are searching for. Mm -hmm. No one's just going to scroll and think like, yo, let me just change my roof real quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do Google ads too. Yeah. So the reason like, for example, we're running, we could also run Google ads. Like I've, I think I saw a video of someone running Google ads for permanent makeup artists and like she got pretty good results. but um it's it's like an impulse purchase for like women for women at least like for me i wouldn't like see an ad to literally like you know get something done on my face permanently and then be like yo let me just book an appointment directly but um yeah i mean it works well for us so yeah yo nate uh all right sweet uh so uh just quick little context um uh, so my agency is um <clears throat> we're helping online coaches specifically in the health and wellness uh sector um with short form content through ads and i've been doing a lot of uh research and stuff like just talking to them not actually like offering any kind of services or anything like that just trying to gain some insight on the industry as a whole and one thing that we were planning on doing was running tiktok ads as one of our short form content and with the new uh litigation and stuff in the u.s with tiktok potentially getting banned a lot of clients seem to be very hesitant with using TikTok in the future, um, since, you know, it could potentially go away. And uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on if you see TikTok actually getting banned or if it would be better to focus on other short form content instead. Um, honestly, I don't know. I'm not going to like pretend I'm an expert on TikTok because I don't know. But um, yeah, I mean, in, in my opinion, TikTok's fine. Like it's probably not going to go anywhere. But uh, I, don't, I don't I don't even think it really matters because if you're yeah. growing your brand, that means more people will know you. And people who are posting on TikTok are usually just posting to feed traffic elsewhere, like their website or some other platform where they can monetize way better because TikTok is just shit for monetization. And anyone who sees you on TikTok starts, you know, they get to know you. So I don't really think it matters if you get banned. Like if Thomas got banned on YouTube, you guys wouldn't just, you know, forget about Thomas, right? So no, Thomas mm -hmm. is doing this and that. I would just diversify. Yeah. Just don't stick to one. Okay. Um, so uh, do you all think YouTube Shorts is actually a good route to go with that then? Um, no, it really it depends. Like how much are you going to charge for that? Uh, right now, it's, it's kind of hard. It kind of changes from client to client because what we have is with depending on how much they charge as their service. So we do a 2x on what their service is. So basically, let's say they charge $2,000 for uh their retainer and stuff with their clients we said we asked for a four thousand dollar recliner as a example and then we guarantee at least them the 2x their investment on that on like 
what time period? Like uh, yeah, in like 90 days. Okay. Um, yeah, I would go for TikTok. Just because you can go viral on TikTok and not necessarily on YouTube instantly. But yeah, honestly, I'm not too experienced in, in like shorts. All I can tell you is that like every day I get like at least 15 messages of people asking me if they could do uh, edit my shorts. Um, so I don't know. That's like good insight for you if you're if you're going for shorts. Okay. Yeah, that definitely helps. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Let's get one more question from Mateo. Hey. So if my question is, if I have a pay after results offer with a minimum contract of three months, should I try to get the first one pay after and then the other one, the other two uh, upfront, or should I keep it on the three months of pay after? My thought process is because if I have, I was wanting to do the first one pay after results, but then the first month will end, they will pay me for my results, and then they will need to pay me again for this second month upfront. And I have the feeling that that could be like something, have a bad, bad experience for them being like paying double on that second month. What, what's your thoughts about that? Um, could you reiterate the question? Yeah, so if I have a, I want to have a pay after results offer as you have, okay. So should I do the three months pay after at the end of the month or I wanted to do the first month after and then the other two upfront because they already have the trust, but they will need to pay on the second month, the end of month of this first month and then the, the start of the second. So do you think that's good to do or should I keep it all the three months at the end of the month? Um, you want to get paid like you don't want to do pay me like after 90 days because um you know you want to get paid at some point yeah it was meaning at the end of the each month for oh, the at the end, months. okay so um it's better like just think of it as like you know it's better for them if they pay later but it's better for you if they pay up front mm -hmm. so it all depends on how confident you are that you can deliver results to them if you're very confident they can pay later after you get them the results um but if you're not then you're still in that learning phase and you want to charge them or you want to basically work for them for free or for a commission or you want to charge them and refund their money if you don't um like reach the uh the results mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, should I do that for all the three months or just for the first one and then try on the second and the third one to get paid up front? Yeah, I mean, you can communicate with them. Make sure you're just in communication and you're like, all right, so are these like good results? And then you can kind of sense if they're happy or not. And depending on that, you can re it, like recalibrate um, your offer and you can say, okay, for this month, if I get you these results, can I get paid this amount um, at the beginning or at the end? Mm -hmm. I hope that answers it. Yeah, more or less. My question is, if, if, if I, in the sales call and, it, and I, with the, prospect, I, with the prospect and I say, okay, the first month will be pay after result. We guarantee you X amount of appointments. And at the end, I will get paid uh, to 2K. And then on the second and the third one, then we will transition to a pay up from. So when I'm in the situation that I already got paid for the first month is gone, I they owe me the 2K, that's good. And then they know now that they need to pay me that 2K from the first month and then the 2K from the second month up front. So that will be a 4K payment in, in, a, in a short period of time. So I don't know if that will be bad for them or they will think have a bad experience for that because they are paying too much on the second start of second month. Do you follow me? Yeah. Um, what do you think, Arturo? I think if you're going to do pay at the end of the month for the first month, just commit to pay at the end of the month for across all three months. Okay. I don't think you should switch it up midway. Uh, if they pay you after the first month, then they'll, they're, they're going to pay you after the second and third month. So mm -hmm. just, you know, don't be cash hungry. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. All right. So All right, guys, we got to wrap it up. Okay. Thomas, final words. Yeah. Um, I would challenge all of you guys to do a business walk in. Like if you're going for local businesses, like meet the business owner in person because it's just going to humble you and you're going to realize that, yeah, you're you know, you actually don't know a lot about what you think, you know, and, you know, you're going to learn how to sell, which is like the most important thing you have to learn how to communicate with people and basically persuade them to have confidence that you can deliver results.
for them. And that's like the only skill you need in life in general, right? Just to persuade people. So yeah, 